Hey everybody, it's Webby again. Welcome to another video. Today we're having a look at the brand new 2024 Hyundai Kona Hybrid. Now a few months ago, I actually test drove the base model Kona, the two litre petrol engine. And in that video, I said a couple of things. One, I'd like to try it out with the N-Line package, but also I'd like to try out the hybrid powertrain. And today, this yellow beast behind me fills both those uh, requirements. So, it's a base model hybrid with the N-Line package in a very, very bright yellow. It does come in other colors, thankfully, because this one does get a lot of attention. So today, we're gonna to go out and have a look at the differences between the car I reviewed a few months ago and see what you actually get in the N-Line package and see how the hybrid drivetrain transforms the driving experience of this car. So let's get So here we are then in the driver's seat of this Kona Hybrid N-Line. The dashboard and everything else is pretty much the same as before when I drove the base model a few months ago. The only thing that's actually changed that you can really tell is the gear selector is just to the right side of the steering wheel just there. Uh, and all you literally do is you twist it forward to go into drive or back towards you to go in reverse and then you press the button on the end to actually put the car into park. So that's really the only difference here. Um, steering wheel's all the same. You've got all the same digital dash there in front of the driver. We've got the same huge entertainment screen there, which has got the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We've got the wireless phone charging down there. Um, and the gear stick has been replaced by this drive mode button here. Um, because in the base model, we had sort of the big um, sort of traditional gear selector. Uh, so that's now changed because we've got the one um, over there by the steering wheel, which I just showed you a moment ago. So yeah, so the layout is all exactly the same. Uh, so for those of you who haven't watched that other video, um, either go and watch it, because um, that's um, a really cool video. That was a really impressive little car to drive. Um, but just to give you a quick run through, the left-hand side of the steering wheel, uh, you've got things like your lane keep and your adaptive cruise control. Uh, the right-hand side, so you've got things like your volume and track selection uh, for playlists. This star button here, this is really, really important because you can actually configure that button um, to then sort of have a shortcut to one of the menus on the entertainment screen. So what I've done uh, is when you press this little star button, it actually brings up the driver assistance menus. And the, the reason that's really good is because the driver safety stuff on this car is really, really annoying. It turns on every time you get in the car like most cars do these days. But there's certain bits you want to turn off because it is just too intrusive. Uh, so I tend to turn off the speed limit assist, I turn off the driver attention warning, um, which is this little device here in front of the driver. It basically keeps an eye on you to make sure you're, you know, you're focusing, focusing on the road ahead, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it's a bit over uh, enthusiastic. It turns on all the time and is bloody annoying, basically. Uh, the other thing I always turn off is the lane keeping aid for the same reason. Uh, it's a bit oversensitive. Um, and I just don't like it sort of constantly correcting the steering wheel uh, when I'm driving along. Um, so yeah, so that's what you can do with that little star button on the steering wheel. And so I do straight to the driver assistant so I can easily and quickly uh, turn off the bits and pieces that I don't like. I do like the physical buttons we've got here, um, which are shortcuts to some of the main bits and pieces you're going to use on the infotainment system. Um, it has got wireless car players I mentioned a minute ago had to turn it off because I'm filming on my phone um, but other than that it connects seamlessly works really really easily the voice control is good um, so yeah the actual um, use of the Apple car plane here is fantastic uh, below that we've got the dual zone climate control again very very easy to use and uh, it has got quite a nifty feature so you can do it just for the driver so that it turns off the passenger side of things uh, which is actually quite cool uh, that's a nifty little uh, sort of feature to have uh, we've then got a couple of USB-C charging points down here as well. And as I said, plus the wireless charger. So you can actually charge uh, a couple of devices at the same time. Uh, as well as the drive mode button selected down here, we've also got an auto hold function for the electric handbrake. Um, a button there to turn the cameras and the sensors on and off manually. We've then got a bit of storage here. We can see we've got a couple of decent sized cup holders, uh, which you can get rid of and lock them away. So then obviously increase the storage space uh, or you just push the button and out pop the cup holders. We've got the armrest here just in the middle again like we had in the previous Kona that I drove. Uh, it lifts up and you've got a little storage tray there. But then when you lift that out you can see a little bit more storage there. But strangely enough when you shut the armrest down 
I'll just turn the camera around. There's no front to it. So if you have bits and pieces in there, if you have to brake hard, everything that's in there could end up falling out and obviously um, ending up on the floor or something like that, uh, which isn't particularly great. If we have a look around the cabin though, uh, it's actually really nice in here. I like the little sort of red accents we're getting across here by the air vents and also across there and on the passenger side of the dashboard as well. The interior does get an upgrade on the inline package. Uh, so we've got these really nice sports seats, uh, which are sort of fake leather on the outside and then suede in the middle. And then a nice red stripe with the N logo, uh, just to give it a bit more of a sporty appearance. Um, and it does actually lift the interior of the car really nicely. Uh, the bolsters are really good on this car. Uh, they really hug you in on this sort of your rib page, uh, down your leg area here as well. Um, and actually really, really comfortable too, which is really important. Now the view out here for the driver, as you can see, the visibility is really, really good. Side windows were a decent size as well. Um, the A pillar isn't too bad, obviously depending on where you've got your seat. Um, so that doesn't really pose too much of a problem in terms of coming out of junctions. Uh, we've got blind spot monitor along with all the other sort of safety features you get on this car. Uh, as you'd expect here in 2024, is full of safety tech. Looking around the back of the Kona Hybrid, um, the nice suede sort of trim carries from the front of the car. So it's actually really sort of comfortable to sit on. Uh, it's nice to see we've got a couple of air vents with those little red stripes on there as well. Uh, and also down the bottom, just in the storage area, we've got two USB-C fast charging points. Uh, so really cool for rear passengers. Um, other bits and pieces we've got, if I just spin the camera around, uh, we've got the armrest which folds down. We've got a couple of cup holders in there as well. Uh, so the usual sort of stuff. Uh, at the base of the two outer seats, you've got the ISO fixed child mounting points. Um, not child, child seat mounting points. You're not going to attach your children directly to the chair. Uh, in terms of legroom, uh, actually not too bad, as you can probably see. Uh, I've got a fair bit of legroom there. I can get my feet under the seat as well, uh, which is really cool. Um, visibility from the rear is pretty good too. You get a nice view out the front of the car. The side windows were a pretty decent size as well. And although we've got a black headlining, it doesn't feel too claustrophobic in here uh, because we've got quite a bit of uh, sort of head height. Um, so in the back, it's actually pretty decent. So it looks lovely and sunny out there. You can't really tell that it's really, really windy. But when you stand outside, you can. Uh, hence, a lot of this review is inside the car today. All right, so here we are on the outside of this Kona N line. Uh, now, I apologize if the audio gets a bit dodgy on this video. If you look at those trees over there, it's blowing an absolute gale here in Melbourne today. Um, something like 33 kilometer an hour winds, so absolutely crazy. Uh, normally I would stand in front of the car and talk you around the car and point out bits and pieces. Um, but as I was just fin finishing the introduction to the video, the tripod fell over um, in the wind. So I don't risk that happening again and damaging my camera. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of a different vibe. Uh, but we're still going to show you uh, around the outside of the car, hopefully, if you can hear me. Um, so anyway, on the outside of this N-line packed vehicle, big thing you'll notice between this and the base model that I reviewed a few months ago is that the wheel arches, uh, the sort of section just here around that, just above sort of the wheels, it was black plastic on that base model. When you get the N-line package, it becomes full body colour, which is a much nicer sort of appearance for the vehicle. Uh, finishes it off much nicer, uh, in my opinion. Uh, around at the front of the car, the front bumper gets a bit more um, sort of sporty appeal as well. Uh, you've got that nice gloss back black section across the middle where the front number plate goes. Um, so yeah, just a much sort of sportier appearance of the whole car itself. Um, the LED light bar across the middle. Uh, then say so this is the base model, so it's only the, the sort of the corners of the light bar that light up. Uh, whereas if you get the premium model, the whole light bar lights, um, lights up from one side of the car to the other. Um, coming around to the side, this is the hybrid version of the, uh, the Kona. So we get 18 inch alloy wheels. Whereas if you get uh, one of the other engines, you get 19 inch wheels. Um, I suspect that's because they want to sort of obviously try and maximize efficiency for the hybrid powertrain. The other bits and pieces we get uh, on the exterior of the N-line package, so we've got things like black door mirrors, uh, we've got black roof rails just there at the top, and we've got this rather funky uh, sort of split rear spoiler. So here we are then, this is the back of the Kona uh, with the N-line package. Uh, so again, you see that sort of sporty look to the back of the car, and so the rear spoiler up there, 
uh, which I think is actually a pretty cool um, sort of design feature. Uh, it does look really, really good. Uh, we've then got an extended sort of splitter down the bottom to give it a bit more of an aggressive appearance. Uh, plus we also two tailpipes for the exhaust. Um, so a hybrid makes it look quite sporty. Um, and then light bar across here on the back of the vehicle. Same boot size as we had on the base. Of you don't lose anything because you've got the hybrid powertrain. So just over 400 litres uh, carrying capacity um, in its sort of standard um, sort of fit out if you like. But you can extend that to over 1200 litres uh, if you fold the rear seats down. So we've got about an hour's drive now to get back to hand the keys back to this Kona Hybrid. Uh, so it's going to give us a good opportunity for me to tell you exactly what this car's all about, what it drives like, what's the fuel consumption like, um, and give you my overall thoughts and opinions as well. So, so first things first then, what's under the bonnet of this Kona Hybrid? Well, it's a 1.6 litre petrol engine with obviously an electric motor and a battery. Complete power is 104 kilowatt and 265 newton metres of torque. It's front wheel drive and it's got a six speed dual clutch transmission. So a little bit different from your Toyota, which gets a CVT or continuously variable transmission. So it feels more like a regular car in here with a six speed DSG. Um, you wouldn't really notice any different from a petrol car other than when it's quiet, when obviously it's just in fully electric mode, um, or just when you get that transition between electric and hybrid. It's actually quite a smooth transition, probably not quite as good as Toyota's, but then Toyota's been making hybrid powertrains for 20 odd years, so you know, you've got to give Hyundai a bit of leeway in that sort of department. But as a thing to drive, it's really, really nice. Um, just as comfortable as the 2 litre petrol engine I drove a few months ago, but obviously a little bit more fuel efficient. In terms of noise, it is a little bit noisy inside this car. Um, but again, that's going to depend on the road surface that you're on. Stays really, really windy, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Um, you can hear a little bit of wind noise around the A pillar, but I think you're going to get that in any car in today's weather conditions, so that's not a slur on the corner at all. I do find it really nice to drive this car. I love the visibility, I love the comfort, I love the space. It is a lot bigger than the previous generation Kona. Uh, it's a much more complete car. The service intervals for this car are the same as the petrol powered car, so 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, uh, and the first five are capped at 3.99 each, so pretty decent. Warranty is five years unlimited mileage, and there's a separate warranty for the battery for eight years uh, or 160,000 kilometres. In terms of the price of this car, so as I said, we start off life with the base model Kona, uh, you then got the hybrid powertrain and the N line package. With this yellow paint finish, currently on the Hyundai website, the driveway price is 44600 here in Victoria. So not necessarily bad value for money. The end line package adds about 4000 uh, and the same for the hybrid powertrain. So if you took that off and literally had a base model Kona, you're looking at $36,000 or thereabouts, um, which is the car I drove a few months ago. I definitely think the N-Line package lifts the appearance of this car, uh, both on the inside and the outside. Those body-coloured wheeled arches look much nicer than the black plastic that I had on the car and the base model a few months ago. And the interior is a lot nicer too. I do like these suede seats with a red stripe down the middle and a little N-Logo um, on the top there as well. When you have the N-Line package, you actually get a set for choice colours than you do if you don't have the N-Line package. So you can choose either like this yellow or there's also an orange that you can't get if you don't have the end line pack. So if you want something really bright like this yellow, uh, then you do have to opt for the end line package, unfortunately. The good thing though, is that if you do opt for the end line pack, you don't have to have yellow. I wouldn't myself because it's a little bit bright. I feel a little bit sort of bold and out there and quite an outgoing sort of person and love bright things. Yeah, it's definitely a colour for you. Uh, I'd probably be a little bit more sensible and get a black or a nice dark grey or something like that uh, just to be a little bit more subdued. So the performance, how does it actually drive? Well, it's actually pretty good. It's no sort of Kona N, so not going to 
do any drag races away from the traffic lines, but it makes good enough progress around town. It keeps up with traffic quite easily on the freeway. So it's actually a good sort of combination of enough power, but also decent fuel economy, nice handling, comfortable. There's lots and lots of positives to say about this car. My only negative is really all that safety stuff that keeps intruding all the time, but thankfully you can turn it off. The claimed fuel consumption is actually 3.9 litres per hundred. In the week I've been driving it so far, I'm averaging about 4.4, so actually fairly close to what Hyundai claimed that this car can do. Like I say, I've got about an hour's trip to get back to drop this car off today, and a lot of that is actually the freeway, so the 4.4 might even come down slightly by the time I give the keys back. Uh, but even so, 4.4 on a week's worth of driving is actually quite impressive. I've done just over 300 kilometres so far in the week I've had the car, um, and that's going to be sort of close to 400 uh, later when we give the keys back. Now, I would normally finish this video outside the car so you can see what it looks like and, you know, tell you my thoughts and opinions. But it's so bloody windy outside today, uh, and I don't want to risk my tripod falling over and damaging my phone again. So, here's my thoughts on the car. Yes, I would buy one of these. I wouldn't have it in yellow, though. I like the car, I like the specification, I like the styling of the inline package, uh, both on the inner side and the outside. I love the way the hybrid drivetrain actually drives. Um, obviously the fuel econo economy is a big selling point for this model as well. But it's the standard equipment you get on this base model that really impresses me. Um, normally a base model you miss out on things like wireless car play or wireless phone charging. But you get them all included on this um, base model Kona, which is really, really impressive. So yeah, as I said in my previous video, when I drove the, uh, the original Kona base model, um, I'd get either the hybrid or the electric. You've got to really want the electric and have the infrastructure um, in place to sort of choose that option, I think. So the hybrid is probably the best sort of all-round version that you can choose. Uh, you get the economy. You can go fill up at a petrol station just like a regular petrol car so it doesn't take long and it's not particularly expensive. So that would be my choice. Hybrid, in line, but not in yellow. So there you go, that's my thoughts and opinions. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a like, share it with your friends, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel because uh, that will tell you every time a new car review comes out. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below for me. Uh, then I'll answer them for you as soon as I can. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you watching the video. Uh, I hope to see you very, very soon.